Hi, Clint Coons here with Anderson Business Advisors. And in this video, I'm going to discuss buying real estate subject to. Now, you may not have heard of this term before, and, and a lot of people have not that are investing in real estate, but really what it means is that you're buying property subject to someone else's mortgage. That's right, you're not even having to use your own credit. How cr great is that? You find someone that already has a mortgage on the property and you walk up to him and you say, you know what, I'm gonna buy your property from you, but I'm not gonna pay off your mortgage. In fact, you're gonna keep that mortgage, it's gonna stay under your name, I'm just gonna buy the house from you for say five or $10,000 because I understand you're in a distressed financial situation possibly and I wanna help you out. Now, a lot of real estate investors have made their fortunes through buying subject to properties. Now, the issue that always comes up with a subject to property is, how do I take title to that property without alerting the underlying mortgage holder that this property was sold to someone else? Because as you can see, this might be a problem for the bank because most real estate mortgages have what is referred to as a due on sale clause or acceleration clause in that mortgage which allows the lender to call the note due if ever there's a transfer of title to that property from the borrower to a third party. Now that kind of blows the whole deal here because if you're a subject to investor, you definitely don't want that note called due because you're buying that property subject to that mortgage so you don't have to use your own credit. So what is the solution to do this? How should you take title to these properties? What it really comes down to, what do you intend to do with it? Do you wanna treat this as a buy and hold or is this gonna be something that you intend to fix up, put a renter in there and then flip it to an investor? Now, a lot of subject to investors do just that. They rehab the property, get an investor in it and then they sell it at a profit. Well, depending on what you wanna do with the deal, the way I suggest you set these things up is to use a land trust. Now, if you're not familiar with the land trust, check out some of my other videos on my land trust channel on why you might consider using a land trust and the benefits that it offers. But let me just show you how this is gonna be done. So if you're a subject to investor, you can take advantage of setting it up the same way. All right, so what we're gonna do is this. We're gonna have a, tr a piece of property right here. Here's the owner of that property. Here you are over here, you're the investor. Now, we don't wanna do this, of course, is have the owner of the property deed the property directly to you because if we did that and the lender found out about it, they're gonna call the note due. And that's not what we're trying to accomplish here. We're trying to get a piece of property subject to another mortgage and I don't wanna come out of pocket any more than the money that I agreed to pay him. And let's assume that I agreed to pay him $10,000 for this property that I'm going to now take over control, rehab and sell to someone else. Now, the ideal tool to use in a subject to transaction is going to be a land trust right here. Okay, so we're gonna set up a land trust. And the way we're gonna set this up is that we can have this initial investor here be the trustee of the trust. So they'll be the trustee, and then you'll be the beneficiary of this trust. Now, if you recall from, if you watch some of the videos on land trust, the trustees have very little control over the trust. So there's not a lot of concern here for you in doing this transaction that they're gonna be in control and, and take you out of the picture because all the control rests with the beneficiaries. So now I'm gonna have the owner of the property deed their property into my land trust. Now here's why I'm putting them on as a trustee. If the lender ever looks on title, what they're gonna see is that owner of property transferred property into a land trust, and let's just call it the blue box trust, transferred in this blue box trust with the owner as the trustee. So if the owner's name was Tom Ford, it's now gonna to be Tom Ford, trustee of the blue box trust. Now, is a lender going to assume that Tom sold his property to someone? Absolutely not, because Tom's name is still listed in title, on title. Okay, so now what we've done is we've transferred the title from Tom Ford individually to Tom Ford as trustee of this Blue Box Trust. No one knows that you're involved here as a beneficiary because that information is not disclosed anywhere. That trust does not get recorded. So now what we're, we're achieving is a very important step here is that we don't want to alert the lender should they look that Tom Ford has relinquished ownership of this property. Now, the next step we're going to do is have Tom Ford resign his position as trustee and you will be appointed as the trustee of the trust. In fact, when the trust is set up, what we're doing is we're putting Tom Ford down as the initial trustee 
and then you're listed as a successor trustee. So if Tom ever resigns his position, then you can step in. Well, we're gonna ask Tom to resign his position in exchange for the $10,000. That's part of the deal here, he has to resign. So once he steps out of the picture, then you step in. So you're right here as the beneficiary, you're up here as the, what we call undisclosed trustee, because on title, you're not listed there, it still lists Tom Ford. Now you might be wondering, well, Clint, if I'm not listed on title, that makes me a little concerned, because who's to stop Tom Ford from trying to do anything with the property? Well, first off, the trust stops him from doing that, but what we're also going to do is have Tom provide you a trustee's deed. That is, Tom's gonna give you a deed taking his name off and putting your name on. And this is something you're gonna hold on to until you need to show up on title. Let's say you wanna sell the property. At that point in time, what you'll do is you'll record that trustee's deed at the county, so Tom Ford never, no longer shows up on title, and you'll show up now on title as the acting trustee. So that's gonna give you the control to deal with you know, title and escrow and close on the sale. Okay, so after we do this, what we also wanna do is make sure that we take our beneficial ownership here after we've taken control as the trustee and get that beneficial ownership transferred over to the appropriate entity. So if I was gonna keep this as a hold, all right, then that appropriate entity is going to be an LLC. So now you will assign your beneficial interest to a limited liability company that you've set up. If this is going to be a flip, then that entity should be a corporation or it could be an LLC taxed as a corporation. And the concern here is I don't want you to be tagged as a dealer. So either way, the land trust is the opt optimal tool for anyone that is looking to engage in subject to transactions because it helps hide the fact that you're actually transferring title to real estate uh, from a distressed homeowner to you as the investor. Because we don't want that mortgage to get called because that happens and it kind of blows the whole deal up. Now, there's other ways to use this tool as well. We're, we're talking here about a subject to transaction where we're dealing with a mortgage, but let's say it's a different transaction. Maybe it's a, a super homeowner lien. You've gone in and you're one of those, you're an investor that finds properties based upon condo owner associate liens or homeowner association liens, and you're taking over title of the property. Another good way to do that. In fact, I'll cut another video just on that type of investing as well and how to structure those deals. You know, if you wanna get a free strategy session on how to put these deals together, how to use land trust, be sure to go to the link right below this video in the notes section there. You can click on that link and you can set up a free strategy session with someone in my firm. We reach out to you, we'll schedule something for 30 minutes and we'll talk to you about this type of investing. Maybe you're a flipper, maybe you're a buy and hold guy. We can go through that as well and we can help you put together a plan. If you've seen my other videos, you know the way I approach asset protection is you gotta look at it as a, th or real estate investing as a three-legged stool. That is, you have to have asset protection, tax, and business planning. So if you're not looking at all three of those legs, maybe it's time to give us a call or sign up for a strategy session and let us help you walk through that process. No cost to you. The only thing you can get from it is more information. All right, take care, everyone.